clear blue water Take me home Soggy bottom by you, boy Play me a song Clear blue water Take me home Bring back them good old days I used to know Must have been something in the water In that old sawmill creek Baptized in the holler I got down on my knees news is number one they're quiet number two you can put a lot more gear in a canoe which enables you to do a lot more you can trap and hunt and fish the banks around the waterway you gotta take a canoe you got a good mode of transportation it's really good for scouting an area water is always going to draw the wildlife so anywhere that there's water you need to be and an area like this, big lake, surrounded by woods, in a wildlife area. All the animals are going to come here sooner or later, so it's a great place to scout just to see what's here. I saw a buck a little while ago, just a little small one, a little fork, and uh, didn't get the camera turned on quick enough to catch him on film, but there's plenty of deer out here, that's for sure. But they say there's a lot of fish in this lake too, and I've caught a few out of here. So I just thought I'd come out here today and scout a little bit, fish a little bit. See what I come up with. What I'm doing now is I'm just playing the wind. I'm just I paddled up wind floating down the bank and letting the wind push me so I can just relax and fish. And I'll paddle back up to another spot and let the wind do the same thing. I'll tell you what guys, you know one of the things that I try to do whenever I'm on the water especially, you know the weather's been pretty bad lately. It's just starting to clear up a little bit, it's still really cloudy, that's why I came fishing today. Thought maybe the fish would be biting, but not having much luck at that. One thing I am keeping an eye on though is, you know, I've got a cheap NOAA weather radio here. Fish storms this afternoon. Highs in the upper 70s. Southeast winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. Chance of rain 80%. Tonight, cloudy. Showers likely with a chance of thunderstorms in the evening. Then a chance of showers after midnight. Muggy. Lows around 70. Southeast winds around... So, I've always got this radio in my pack that's going in the boat. If I'm going to be out in the weather, especially on water, I want to know what the weather's going to be doing. I don't like relying on electronics, no doubt. Batteries suck. This thing's not waterproof, falls in the water, it's done, but I got a waterproof bag I've got it in, and it works well for what it is and for what it costs. And I think it's important for everybody to understand as part of preparedness, you know, if you're going to be out in weather conditions like this, you can take the antenna right off of it, drop it into a dry bag, and when you need it, you can turn it on. I'm checking it, you know, once, twice a day while I'm out here, and at least I know if there's any impending weather coming in that I can't see, because right now, it's cloudy all around me. It could rain any minute, but I want to know what the chance of rain is. I want to know if there's any thunderstorms coming our way, and with this, I can tell.
you know, if you've got a canoe, you've got a lot of advantages. You can hunt from a canoe, you can trap from a canoe, you can scout from a canoe, you can fish from a canoe. You have the ability to transport a lot more gear in a canoe than you do if you are walking. If you can get somewhere by water, river, a large creek or stream, a lake, you know, those are ideal conditions for you to own a canoe. And canoes are not that expensive. You can get a canoe easy enough for $200 or less, minus what you'd have to pay for a flotation device and a paddle of some kind. And this paddle is a La Lavica paddle. It's a pretty good paddle. It's actually two paddles that can be combined and extended into one paddle so that I can stand up in this canoe. I like to stand up while I'm scouting. When I'm paddling a lot, I like to stand up and that allows me to be able to see a little bit better. I generally don't fish standing up in a canoe. Sometimes I do, but it's probably not a good idea. Starting to get a little bit of a drizzle again now. Haven't caught any fish today. I thought maybe I would with this storm going by, but I think this pressure system's hanging around enough it's keeping it from biting. Okay, so let's talk about getting this canoe back up on a Jeep and how I tie it down. Real simple process. I just leave the painter ropes on there. There's two painter ropes on there. I'll show you those in a minute. And that's what I use to tie it down. I just flip it upside down, slide over the cargo rack, and tie her down and go. We'll talk about how I do that right now. Okay, so both of these painters basically are just pulled through the hole and they have just a slip knot put in this end so that I can put this through to cinch it down and it becomes a slip but when I pull it through here the rope won't come out and that becomes my painter line when I'm tying off to the bank or when I'm maneuvering the canoe around an obstacle or something like that there's one just like that in the back Okay, so now what we've got here is we've got our painter rope that we talked about. It's got the loop on it so it won't pull through. We're just going to come underneath the Jeep here. We've got a hole in the bumper down here and I've just stuck a carabiner through that hole to make it slide easier. And I'll just come up through that loop on the painter and pull down on it to form a trucker's hitch. And I want to pull on it until I'm pulling that front end up a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll just hold on to it and tie a normal trucker's hitch in there, just like this, that it will come undone easily. Pull that thing tight, and that's going to be pretty temporary for the moment, so we'll leave it with that loop just like that for the moment. We could just pull that straight out if we needed to, okay? So we'll tie it back down, and we'll come back to it after we do the front, and I'll show you how I kind of cinch that up a little bit just for a little bit of security in the end and don't mess it up so I can't get it undone. So we got our loop. Now on the front side, we're gonna do just exactly the same thing. We've got our painter line right there with our loop in it. And I'm just gonna find this good spot. There's a roll, there's a bar underneath here that I usually go through. And I'll do the same thing with this one. Except this one I'm going to draw as tight as I can get it right now. Same thing. I'm going to make that trucker's hitch. Pull it up tight. Now, here's the trick. 
just to give yourself a little extra security. The trick is you've got this loop and you've got this tag that you can just pull and that loop will come out. So what I'll generally do is I'll put this up through that loop and draw it down tight against that rope just like that. Now this can't come out no matter what without pulling that rope through it. And when I want to get it undone, I can just kind of tug on this and it'll loosen that rope up enough to pull that out of there. And then I can take that trucker's hitch right out. So I'll tighten that thing all the way down, put my loop in there, cinch that trucker's hitch up. Then I'll pull that loop through Put some tag in there and then pull it against it like that. And I'll do the same thing on the back and that's not going anywhere. Okay guys, well I hope you enjoyed joining us today on this little short canoe scout. A couple little tips and tricks along the way about the NOAA weather radio, how to load the canoe up nice to tie to hold it down on top of the Jeep, things like that. Didn't catch any fish, but that's the way it goes. That's why they call it fishing, not catching. We do have a big storm front moving through right now. I've seen a couple, three other guys out here fishing. One guy left this morning early when I got here, and he had three catfish that he had caught off the bank overnight, off the rocks back here. The rest of these people I haven't seen catch anything yet since I've been out here paddling around. I appreciate you joining me for this video. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything that you do for me, for my family, and for my school. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can.